I'm in shock about how good my forearms and my wrists feel. It's exciting. So Tina, what are you doing right now with your bands? Okay, so I actually put my armbands on and at the end of the day when I'm done with clients, sometimes I grab them and it might seem a little bit crazy to you, but being a, a former swimmer, I have a little arm workout that I like to do. Um, I feel like it, it helps you know, not only tone my skin, it helps me build muscle, and once again, remarkably, while I'm working out, it's very relaxing. Afterwards, I have a very calm, calm sense of comfort and peace inside, which uh, is hard. So what are the movements that you do? Okay, so I take it just as if, for me, uh, in the beginning, like I'm doing bench press. So I start out here, and I kind of come up. I'm here, and I think about my chest at this time, and kind of tightening when I hit. Got it. It's here. So you're contracting your muscles. I'm contracting. Great. Contracting here and then I'm coming down. And what I love about this is everything I do is slow. There's not a chance for injury. I come up and I'm working my triceps. And I push up in a manner that I'm almost pushing through it. Because this is where I've noticed it really helping my skin is these movements. After that, I'm here, and it's here. It's again, the, the skin on the back of my arm and my triceps. Wow. I do a few of these, and then I come down with my hands, just turning here. And then I'll do some backstroking with my pinky and my pinky. And again, now what I'm not, what I'm, what I love about this is my waist, my stomach, and my all-over core. So your core is being worked right now. Very much so. Wow. It's causing me to, um, like, just keep my back in line, tighten my abs and sort of pulling on my waist. Got it. Pulling. And your glutes and your back, it, it's pressed against the... Yes, okay. definitely. Um, sometimes when I'm done doing an arm workout here, I'll sit up, come up, and start this movement. While all along, I'm um, my lower back is pushed in because after a long day of work and clients leaning over, this feels amazing. And not only am I working my abs right now, I'm tightening all through here. I love this workout, love it. So I'll go from here to here. Oh, wow. I love this. Once again, getting a stretch on my arm. And it's remarkable because I'm right here in my home and I can be done with this workout in 15 minutes. Yeah. Here. Then I'll relax, close my eyes, and actually start doing some vowels. A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. A, E, I, O, U. And what I love about that is I'm, I'm really, it looks like I'm tightening, but I'm actually, it's actually incredibly relaxing because like I said, when I'm with my clients leaning over, my neck will get stiff. And um, just feeling really good. Hi, I'm Tina Newman. I'm sitting here in my workroom. I'm an esthetician. I've been an esthetician for over 30 years. I was trained in New York at L'Oreal headquarters. Uh, that was a brilliant company to train with, and I'll uh, always appreciate the the gift of uh, such an incredible uh, company training me. I've been running my own business now for 26 years. I'm 55 years old. I'm a mom of two children, and I'm a grandma recently. Um, I love my business 
so much. I feel so lucky. Uh, my clients range from 12 years old, 13 years old to 80 years old. I see uh, many clients, uh, there's skin issues, teenagers with acne, um, young adults are wanting to work on anti-aging. Um, I do a lot of waxing and uh, I work with a few doctors as an independent contractor, a lot of consulting since I've been in the business a long time. And um, I just feel incredibly fortunate to do what I do. Uh, and I love it. I hope I can keep doing it for another 15 years. Great. And who are, like, what is the biggest issue that people come to you with skin-wise? That's tough because if they're, if they're teenagers and they're trying to clear their skin up, um, they're asking the fastest, quickest way to do that. And then uh, the best products to use, makeup, skivers, that's a teenager. Usually girls in their 20s to 30s are getting ready for their wedding or um, they're very curious about um, preventative skincare. You start later 30s, 40s, and then we want a lot of uh, uh, anti-aging. So whether it's a procedure or lotions or cleansers, um, pharmaceutical, uh, absolutely all the way down to just shopping at your local drugstore, their cosmetic counter. Um, depending on the client, it depends on their need. So everyone's kind of different, whether they're uh, very sophisticated and they want 20 products and they're going to go under the knife or they're saying i'm never going to have a procedure what can i do that is just going to help me age gracefully with absolutely nothing but what i have at my fingertips got it got it and so when i think of an esthetician i think of you right here in your work office and you're not really moving a lot but in fact you're doing a lot of work. What is the kind of work that you do that may cause you some discomfort, some pain, some soreness? What are those movements? Absolutely, great question. I'm incredibly cognizant of my body and ergonomics. Um, being an athlete, growing up most of my life, I understand uh, certain aches and pains that come with that and then also just come with age and repetitive movements. So when you think of an esthetician, it's not that different than being a hairdresser, being a masseuse, being a uh, physical therapist, if you will. What starts to happen is a lot of arthritic overuse, tendonitis in our hands. So um, it really is important for us to have correct ergonomics and watch, we, if we wanna go the distance, I've been doing this for, like I said, my own business 26 years, but a little over 30 years. I really have to be careful of the way that I um, work on my clients. Yeah, and what are some of those repetitive movements that you do? Um, it's very wristy, very okay. wristy, and then if you think you're losing, using your thumbs in a massage movement, I'm bent over, so I've got neck stuff that could have issues, lower back, so it's just very important to um, sit properly, use my core strength, and watch myself because yeah. after seeing 10, 10 clients in a row, you can start to get very sloppy and uh, my um, position that I hold my body just starts to get lax. Got it. And so you got 10 clients a, a day, let's say, is it a half an hour, an hour? How roughly, it, how long? Depending on um, what they want done, it could just be a simple eyebrow and a face cleanse. That could be 30 minutes, that can be 10 minutes. If they're um, getting uh, facial resurfacing, a bikini wax, a leg wax, they could be here for 45 minutes to an hour or an hour and a half. Got it, got it. And Tina, you appear to be a very fit woman. Thank you know, you. you're a former athlete, but if someone looked at you, they'd say, wow, how, did, how does this woman keep in shape? Now, before Katsu, can you explain to me what you were doing? Absolutely. Before Katsu, I was just um, pretty much going to the gym five days a week. Um, some of those days would be laying on a mat doing nothing. Uh, some I would go walking around looking at machines uh, and 
maybe touch them and do a few reps and be done. Other times, I think from being a swimmer, I've got some uh, good muscle memory, but I'm not a class type of person. So it would be a little lifting, a little walking on the treadmill, stretching, doing some sit-ups. So, um, and how long would you be at a gym? Let's probably say. a good hour and 15 minutes. And you're out, so you're there an hour and 15 minutes, but like how much like physical movement do you think you're doing in that hour and 15 minutes? Personally, I'm, I'm afraid of weights. I'm not really the type that would lift heavy. I think people look at me and um, they think that I lift heavy weights. I, I don't, I don't, so. Wow. Um, do you do stuff I, like boxing, uh, kickboxing? I did um, do boxing in the past a little, which uh, was incredibly wristy and forearmy. And uh, so that wasn't something I can turn to uh, for a really good sweat. Yeah. I, I like that. Oh, so you were in it for a lot of aerobic work. You wanted to build up a sweat. You want to get your heart rate up. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're seeing 10 clients a day. Mm and you're going to the gym you're an active person i'm extremely active extremely active about four where i'd like to separate is before your husband's shocking passing and after okay i think when i when i think about your story mm -hmm. there's a before and there's an after definitely and explain the before when he was healthy um, okay. and, and with you. Would, and I'll take it even a step further. The year before my husband passed away, my father passed away the year before that. My father was kind of my workout buddy, one of my best friends, and we would just go to the gym every day. We would walk on the treadmill, lift little weights, and then time to go to coffee <laughs> and eat uh, croissants with lots of butter. And I would say uh, that I, I never really looked in the mirror during that time. And then Tim passed away a year later, but all my marriage to Tim and my working out with my dad was um, just sort of, if you will, skating, kind of just going to the gym, showing up, but not really hard workouts. Well, dad died, a year later Tim died, and I all of a sudden just would look in the mirror and literally didn't recognize myself. I went from about 128 pounds, 129, I'm five foot two, to currently weighing 114 pounds, which um, was a little frightening for me because even at that weight, I, I thought, oh, I just won't eat that cookie. Maybe I need to lose three pounds. I could never imagine myself. You so, mean, so you're talking about at 128, 129, you were conscious of not splurging on a cookie or- Absolutely. Okay. Uh, but I never thought, that I looked in the mirror and that I looked big. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't feel like, Tina, you really need to lose weight. So um, I lost my dad at 49 years old, at 51, which I think is important to document because at 51 years old, I lost him. In our 50s, myself included, tons of my clients, even in their late 40s, we talk on this table when they come in about skincare, we talk about hormones, menopause. So at a time in my life where for sure I would have gained a little weight, stopped having my period, um, just you actually gain weight very easily, I lost a lot. And I know it was because of what was going on, my nerves, my grief, and my sadness. I had a shocking death with my husband, he died in six weeks of a horrific disease. So that kind of threw me for a loop. And um, I literally uh, didn't work out for, for a while. Uh, not that long, maybe three months, four months. And what I started to notice was for the first time in my life, so at 128 and 29, I didn't have, I didn't have loose skin. I just didn't, I'm very lucky that way. So I started looking in the mirror and um, people were telling me, you're so skinny, what, what's going on? Are you okay? And they, didn't, they didn't ask that question be, when Tim was alive. Never. Never. Never, do you, do you, like healthy. I like, thought I looked healthy and yeah. healthy. And, well, I mean, why would, what do you think they're, what was the difference that they were looking at? I think extreme, like, I didn't see it as much going through everything, but when people looked at me, they're like, you are so skinny. And then when it came time to go to bed and get naked and put my pajamas on, I would look in the mirror and just be, whoa. Because I was trying to maintain good eating habits, 
and um, and so you 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 heard their comments absolutely. and you internalized them said whoa maybe yeah. these people are right right Is that? exactly oh. I just took me a while um, with everything I was going through to really understand I knew mentally what I was feeling but it really had an impact on me physically in many ways it yeah. had a big impact on me okay so so your husband died you're you're still sort of going to the gym people are telling you you know these things but you're still working correct you're absolutely st- and that tendonitis you feel th- was that getting worse did you just feel it more I mean, I'd find myself oh that's such a good point you make when Tim died I started working way more ah, for a great distraction got it. so yes um, again I started feeling um, I mean, my heart hurt so much, I ignored this for a while and just started taking as many clients as I could in a day, which then a few years ago, I was like, oh, I, I, I would go to PT. I, I would do anything to just uh, ice them, heat them, try to calm this. I, it's like a, uh, I can't, it's just like a, a sharp pain. Constant. A constant, a constant pain. So not only when I was, st- not when I'm working, when I lay down to be still, just a sharp pain that I just felt like I really needed to be stretching a lot. On both arms or, or only? Primarily my right, but I started getting it here because in my business you hold, so you yeah. do a lot of this okay. movement. And so I, I definitely had it in my left arm as And well. what kind of physical therapy did you do? PT would just um, and put electrodes on me okay. and uh, leave me alone for a while and um, at one point they were sort of uh, deep digging deeply because they said I had a lot of scar tissue and I would soak in ice and soak in heat soak in ice and heat and that's about it did you feel uh, some relief temporary relief temporary relief especially if I did what they asked me at the gym and took little weights and did this um, but it would come rushing back in okay. uh, the moment I stopped. Well, uh, about how many um, physical therapy visits did you do a week, a month? Mm, I, I think there was a while a couple of years ago that I went maybe two times a week for about six weeks. So. Okay. Did you do I anything? Well, my insurance would pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> did you do anything alternative? Acupuncture, um, some Cream. kind of supplement? CBDs. Got it. And um, I think Arnica, or somebody makes a rub, menthol. I, I would try just when I laid in bed just to do some rubbing, take some Advil, ibuprofen. Got it. That's about it. Doctors would say the only way to really cure your pain is to stop what you're doing. So stop that repetitive behavior, which there was no way with what was going on mentally with me, I was going to stop seeing clients. Uh, They were helping me get through the grief of losing my father and Tim. So not only was I not going to stop, I was going to amp it up and take more clients. Got it. And when you talk about the grief that was just so profound and so deep, um, you mentioned PTSD. When I, when I think of PTSD, I think of a soldier. Mm-hmm. I think of a police officer. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily think of a, of a widow. Yeah. But it's just as real, just as heart-wrenching, correct? It's so real. It's so a stage right here. It's so traumatic. And I have friends that I share my stories with and they share theirs or whether their spouse was sick for two years dying of cancer or he died in one year or he died instantly in a car crash or in my circumstance, Tim died in six weeks, horrifically losing his mind. He died of a a neurological brain disease and he lost his ability to speak and understand me and he kind of went out of his mind. There's a lot of screaming and yelling and holding my husband down. And uh, so now, and then he's gone. It got to the point where about 10 days on hospice where he could just be sitting there quiet. Uh, So in in a situation like that, where I get to compare that to losing my father, my father was hospice for six weeks. I got to talk to him. I got to whisper and, and thank him for the life. I got to to say, um, I'll miss you, goodbye. You've done such a beautiful job being my father. And that is so much more peaceful than losing someone so horrifically and so quickly. 
that stays with me. I've done quite a bit of therapy. There's therapies for PTSD called EMDR, or I've just gone to cognitive talking therapy. I've done meditation. I've done yoga. I've exercised. I've gone to retreats. I have done so much on trying to re-enter into this life and be, uh, be back to that sort of grounded, strong, peaceful, filled with gratitude. So it wasn't really until a little while ago that all that started to really feel differently. Got it. When you, it, in that period, when you're adding more clients, um, I would guess some of your clients knew of your husband's. Absolutely. And some did not. Definitely. Um, were you hiding? You know, you're, as you're working, you know, obviously you're focusing on your client. Were you I hiding? look back to answer your question and wonder how I did it. Mm. I read a book by a big executive for Facebook and she lost her husband. And in that book, she, she recommends whatever you do, go back to work as quickly as you can. It is the only thing in your life that's going to remain normal, a, a sense of normalcy, my work. So I started doing it, took her advice, and I'm sure many of my clients saw a completely different Tina. My, I usually have very high energy and very engaging. Haven't seen them for four weeks. What have you been doing? And instead my demeanor was uh, uh, just, I think- Robotic? Much, mm -mm, robotic, going through the motions, that's a great word. And um, so it's that whole thing, fake it till you make it. I know that statement is just, cliche that they throw out there, but you really do, you're just going through the motions. Robotic is good until almost you're not going through the motions anymore. Yeah. So. yeah. And now, now let's get forward to today. Okay. And, um, you're using this thing called Katsu. Mm -hmm. Initially you were like, Hmm, this Katsu, uh, I saw some Japanese women, they always have good skin. It can't do what it's saying. Was that your impression? Absolutely. Not only that, uh, I'm a gym person and uh, I'm not good with electronics. Computers, phones, Katsu looked like it had too many buttons on it to me. So I was, um, I was definitely hesitant to yeah. jump in and it was slow. Yeah. But even if it was a, hey, this is a free machine and it could help improve your skin. Would you have believed it? No. No. I wouldn't have. Yeah. Mm -mm. Now, let, now let's jump forward for today. Mm -hmm. What do you, how do you use Katsu? Mm -hmm. um, what have been the effects, both cognitively, mm -hmm. uh, emotionally, physically, vascularly? It's been incredible. I've been wonderfully surprised and caught off guard because at first I wanted Katsu to build back some lean muscle mass and tighten my skin from losing the weight. Um, oh, so you're saying from 128 down to 113, 114. Okay, so you had some loose skin on you. I, I, I did, and, I, and how do you not, anyway, how do I not even lost that weight when you're sort of in, I'm in my mid fifties, it's just automatic with loss of, in my mind, I know uh, you're losing progesterone, you're losing estrogen, you're losing testosterone, and that's gonna naturally happen anyway. But with me, it just seemed that it was all just caving in. And I, I've never really loved to be such a mus muscly person. I'm like, I want my muscle back. Now I, I miss my muscle because of the skin. It just didn't even really look like me. Yeah, and so how do you use Katsu? I use Katsu daily and I use it for many different reasons now that I'm realizing um, that this is not a workout tool for me. Uh, with COVID, it's been, uh, my bands are my best friends and they go everywhere with me. That's what I tell people. They see me on my bike, they see me at the coffee shop. I'll have them on in my house if a friend's over and I'm cooking. Because uh, now I realize the impact it has not only on my body, my skin, my skin elasticity, my muscle tone on my emotional state 
of being, my energy level, my sleep patterns. It's kind of, um, I really rely now before I lay down and go to sleep at night, put my katsu on. It's almost like I can't wait. That buzzing, that little quiet buzzing is sort of my app, my meditation app, my calming app. And then I go through a few motions and it's remarkable. I, I don't know really what else to say as also as far as if I'm having an anxious day and I'm feeling that anxious um, this come on, which has really happened, it all sort of came rushing back this last few months, um, the anxiety and the fear and the uncertainty. I really realized, whoa, after a great katsu workout, I feel a, none of that's there. My, my agitation and that feeling like, I just really need to talk to my psychologist or I need to go lay down and meditate. I feel so much more comfortable in my body and in my skin. My even, I have to say, even sitting and, and working on people, my posture um, is much better. Uh, I just feel stronger and it's weird. Little by little, I started noticing my skin and my veins coming back and people asking me, are you a trainer? Are you a bodybuilder? And I absolutely not. And I don't lift heavy weights, nor do I rarely touch a weight anymore. Sometimes with my katsu bands, I like water bottles or I like two pound barbells. But as far as my movements that I like, everything is just, I don't know what you call it when you're sort of just using your own body weight. Yes. Um, body weight exercises. Body weight exercises. And um, so, so let's go sort of body by, by body part with okay. Katsu. Okay. What have you seen in your upper body? What, what changes to your muscles mm. um, specifically have you seen? Um, I feel if I were to put my arm out, I don't know how much of me you can see in this interview, yeah. but along here, uh -huh. along my, my bicep and my tricep, I feel like if I sit here, I've still got some loose skin, but but I'd say 75% better than it was. Um, my shoulders, I'm not sure, from being a swimmer and a butterfly, I've had some shoulder issues, never so shoulder surgery, but in the back of the day, cortisone shots, I absolutely uh, even feel like my shoulder, so my shoulders have improved, any pain that I have. So staying away from weights, using my katsu bands, so much improvement in my forearms, not only the way they look, it's the way they feel. So not only the way that my shoulder has a lot of definition now, it actually feels better through my rotator cuff and my joints. Got it, got it. And that pain that you used to feel because of the waxing, how is that? I don't understand it. I don't know, I can't, I can't explain to you why it's almost never there, wow. literally. I don't lay down in bed and start to want to push, just like, uh, usually I'm, I find myself doing this and I don't even know I'm doing it. No. Wow. I don't understand how my little machine could have helped that much, but yeah. it's pretty remarkable. And then your lower body, your hips, your lower glutes, body, your... Lower my hips. I'm going to talk about my back a okay. little bit because a lot of us girls, uh, when we have uh, our workout tops on, or our bras on, we really care about our backs. So with my katsu bands and watching all these videos of katsu, I've figured out how to work my back and I've really noticed... Um, I do look in the mirror a lot. I've noticed that my back is a lot smoother and strong. Right? Got it. Um, so that that kind of blows me away. Uh, I don't get in the water anymore, yeah. so I can't attribute my uh, my broad shoulders to that. Um, but as far as the way the strength looks and the toneness of my back and the tightness of my skin, I notice a big difference. Yeah. So we do you can... think uniformity has something to do with? I mean, your left side and right side just are just perfectly equal could that have something to do with it i'm not sure okay. I, I don't know but i do um i what i'm really thrilled about is uh i'm not almost ever doing an ab workout if you will when i used to go to the gym i used to do ab workouts i may lay down and stretch and while my katsu bands are on, whether I've got arms or legs on, and I'm just sort of have my legs out doing some little scissors. Uh -huh. I barely am doing that type of exercise, and I've noticed my whole 
core. Just a core in my waist. Not only do I feel stronger, so less pain when I'm bent over waxing, right. but absolutely uh, a little smaller and tighter. Got it. So, so that firmness has helped you not only aesthetically, but also in your work. Absolutely. It yeah. strengthens in such a soft, gentle way. I've never used anything like this. I don't care if I'm uh, going to yoga or going to a Pilates, there's parts of my body that get pulled the wrong way or turned with my katsu bands. Everything is very gentle at my own pace, at yeah. my own level of what I want to push my buttons at. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to say it. But, yeah. uh, and then um, your lower body, including your feet, your toes. Mm. That's a what, good what, point what have you that you noticed. Seen? Well, my lower body, I'll talk about my thighs because they were always really developed as a young girl swimming. And um, I never liked that. And you mean now, muscular? It, muscular, overly muscular. And now at my age, using my katsu bands, I almost you're gonna laugh I almost feel like a little taller and leaner I yes. love the way that I have um, some nice hollowness between my thighs when my feet are touching and then we can talk about my feet my feet are sort of a serious issue I've had uh, foot surgery toe surgery on my left foot the doctor said at a bone spur that I would absolutely need he didn't know if I would need it a year later or five years later on my right toe and I've been actually uh, doing some foot and toe exercises that were recommended to me with my bands on. And um, so I'm doing my own PT, if you right. will, instead of uh, going to an office. And I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled and I'm excited that possibly my right toe will not need surgery if I keep using my bands and doing the different workouts and strengthening it that way, so. Yeah, and um, you've covered a lot here. This, this has been perfect. Thank if you. you met another 55-year-old woman mm -hmm. who had some aches and pains and she was going through menopause, what would you recommend to her? I mean, you said, hey, this is a $900 product. It's not cheap, it's, it's you know, it's up there. It's, um, it's, it, it wouldn't be hard for me because it, in my opinion, if she knew me and she knows me personally, I'm very genuine and I don't, I'm an esthetician. I'm in the service industry. I don't like to sell anything, but for me to just give my story to a friend or a client, I, I, I highly recommend it. Absolutely. Along the lines of, it just helps in your whole area of, uh, with, with Menopause comes also, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, a little bit of anxiety. Our hormones change and create that. So not only would I recommend the katsu for that alone, but so many people are not motivated to go to a gym. So um, you can get out of bed, you just slip your bands on. The old Tina thought they were so difficult. Now they're a piece of cake for me. And um, I, I just would highly recommend katsu because of the effects that it has all over our body. I can't, I, it should, you, you mentioned the price of katsu. Someone's going to go to the gym and they're going to hire a trainer and they might even hire a nutritionist. They're going to spend that in a week. So I've got my katsu for life. I, I, I know it's expensive, but not when I broke it down. It yeah. wasn't expensive. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. On any given day, would you say use it once, twice? Um... I like to try to use it twice, Got it. depending on how busy I am. I, n I don't ever want to go to bed without it. So yeah. uh, on the days that I might only use it once because I've been so busy, I, I want it right by my bed. So yeah. because sleeping is another thing that's incredibly disrupted by menopause because of the sweating. And now you add grief to that, PTSD to that and sweating. And I, uh, I'm willing to ask anybody, what do you do for sleep? What do you take for sleep? And now I, I really, I think that alone, I could tell a cop to do that. Got it. And you also do other things. I mean, I've seen you with a bicycle using katsu and you're outside on That's your actually my preserve. favorite thing to do is um, because it's quick. We mentioned back, I would go to the gym for uh, an hour and a half, an hour and 20 minutes, five days a week. I can put my katsu bands on. Um, get on my bicycle, ride around my complex two to three, four times. I'm done in 10 to 12 minutes and I've had an awesome leg workout. 
That's another amazing selling point for me. Uh, I'd like to work smarter, not harder. If I can get something done in a shorter amount of time and really feel amazing, uh, I feel like I've, um, in that 10 to 12 minutes, it's a way better feeling than if I were to go do lunges and leg press for an hour and 20 minutes. Got it. I'm less sore. Uh-huh. I'm, I've, I've worked harder and my body looks better. Right. Yeah. And you haven't had to get in a car and go to another location. Absolutely. No, yeah. it's, it's for, for time management. It's perfect. Yes. What about, um, anything on nails, hair? Um, have you seen well, any? What the more I, uh, the longer I own Katsu and the more I read about it and it, it, it talks about, um, this is where I'm not really good, but really, can I use the word? I'm not sure growth hormones yeah, or yeah. just hormonally. We all know when we stimulate those things. That's why menopause, we're losing hormones. With katsu, I feel like it's doing so much to my body that yes, you're, you're going to have stronger hair. You're going to have better hair growth. Your nails are going to grow. Your teeth, it's almost like people who are, you know, loaded up on biogen or calcium or it's a natural effect that how can it not be when I look down at my arm and I see the tightness that I've created and the healing effect? Why? If it has this healing effect, it absolutely has the effect to keep. What I'm loving it for is, uh, and I don't know if I could just attribute this to Katsu, but my immune system is, um, we've all sort of uh, been looking to build, uh, boost our immune system with what's going on, this COVID, and I feel like it's keeping you know building muscle tone which is very youthful but it's also very healthy for my metabolism so i i do feel it's just all around i, I trust it and it's working so yeah uh, and last question um mentally i remember the first time you used it you said i i feel happy and you were you were you were curious why you had this how a, a it, single bout of it's like, an, it's like an adrenaline rush i think about get happy so after I after I use it well, not only am I so happy because I feel empowered because when I first owned my katsu I was scared I was like I'm never gonna be able to figure this out and I can't believe it. that's how I've been ever since I lost dad and Tim everything seems like the hugest mountain in the world until I figure it out and it's just it's nothing so the fact that I I can do it I slip it on turn it on and I don't have to go anywhere and I can get a quick workout and it's just alone that's enough to make me happy so, but it also just 